Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we continue on with the volumes series of uh, videos that we've done before. Today's lesson is basically on spinning volumes um, where there might be a hole in the middle when you spin. Um, so we're gonna do something called um, volumes by slicing, right? Now, previously, this topic was in syllabus in the extension to syllabus of volumes. Um, it's now being removed, however, I have seen some schools ask questions with these types of questions in there. So thought I'd do a video on it just to show you um, sort of more advanced volumes, right? Some some teachers still pop these into a three unit um, extension one paper. They shouldn't, but yeah, in case they do, now you have a video that has the method. So before I dive in, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and tell all your friends. So now let's get started with this video. With this video, um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of theory on volumes, right? So volumes, just to recap on you know things that um, we know about in the last few videos. Firstly, there is a case where, you know, like if I'm spinning, right? If I take um, a function there and I spin it, yeah, about the x-axis, right? Where this axis here is the axis of spin, right? Yeah, I call this like a, a spit roast, right? Where you basically spit, let's go from A to B. Oops, sorry, that's a six, B, draw that better, right? And let's say at B, I'm gonna draw a sort of, oops, draw better arc, yep. And then sort of have these little strips, right? Now, in the middle here, sorry, let me make those strips a bit more narrow. What I want is to identify a strip, right? This strip here, right? Where I basically will, oops, take this strip, right, over here, and I'll go, well, it sort of looks like this, right? If I sort of take a knife to this spit roast, right? I sort of have something that looks like that, where, you know, this guy here is, it's a cylinder, right? And with this cylinder, I have you know, a small change in X and the radius goes up to the Y value, right? So this guy here, that's the radius, so R equals to Y. So therefore the volume of this one strip, right? Is pi R squared times DX. So then total volume, right? of the whole entire spit roast will be the integral from A to B of pi. Now I can take the pi out, y squared dx, right? That's really the theory with this, right? And the reason why I'm showing the strip cut out, it's important when I put a hole through it in some of the further theory I'm gonna do in a sec. Now, while I'm here, I might as well do the vertical kebab, right? Where it sort of looks like, you know, if I had a, a function that looks like that, and a function that looks like that, and I'm taking sort of from A here to B, where B, I'll draw a little arc, right, and then take sort of slices across here where the axis of spin is the Y axis, right? Yeah, so guys, I wanna take, let's take uh, that sliver there. Yeah. So this guy here sort of looks like yeah, cylinder where that guy there is the color bit. Now, once again, it's a small change in Y and the radius this time is the X value, right? Yeah, so therefore the volume of one of these is going to be pi R squared H, which means total, I don't know, therefore, right? Total volume, volume equals to integral from A to B, pi, so take the pi as a constant out of x squared dy, right? Now let me move that slightly down. Um, group that. that below a bit, so that I can put a nice little box around it, right? Get my formulas all sort of lined up. 
Now, let's do some new theory. So what if I um, created a shape, right? Let's say, for example, I created a shape. Um, actually, you know what? I'll copy this one up here, right? I'll copy this one up here. But what if I did this, right? Instead of getting the area on this side, right? Instead of going from A to B, so let me draw that a bit better. It's just a bit diagonal, right? Hmm, don't know why it's not symmetrical. Let me make it a bit more symmetrical. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. Um, so once again, from A to B, but instead of getting the area in here, right? And he rotated about um, the axis, right? I rotate about the axis. What if I said to you, I want to get the area um, between here and here. I want this area rotated, right? I want this area rotated. Now, what does it create? If you sort of picture it, right? You sort of get like all the straight line here. If I rotate this whole thing around, it's going to create almost like a cylinder, right? Can you picture like, if I rotate that blue section around the y-axis, I sort of get a cylinder, but with a gap in the middle, right? And that's really important, right? You get a cylinder and a gap. So basically, if I take a slice, right? If I take a slice, right? And get a, a slice of the middle, right? So say, for example, I take this slice here, right? And I know I'm going to get the cylinder on the outside, right? What's really important, right? And I'm going to zoom in for here, right? Just to illustrate it. Right? What's really important, actually, can I ask a favor? I want to draw the circle a bit fatter. Right? Just to illustrate something, right? So I'm going to get a circle, but then on the inside, and I'll use a different color to show this, right? On the inside, actually, maybe, yeah. I'm going to get a gap, right? There's going to be a gap, a gap circle. So it's going to, so if I sort of take it outside, right? Illustrate this by itself, right? I'm definitely going to get a cylinder on the outside. But what's really important is that there's a hole through the middle, right? And that hole is going to get wider and wider as you go up and narrow as you go down, right? But I need an expression for this slither of volume, right? And that slither of volume is going to be, now we know the radius on the outside is going to be big, right? Let's call that capital R. And the radius of the smaller one, right? Let's call that little r, right? So then quite simply, right? Using, you know, year eight measurement, um, the volume of this one slice is going to be pi capital R squared minus pi little r squared, right? Pretty straightforward. And if I wanted to, I can factorize the pi out and go r squared minus little r squared, right? Which means if I wanted the sum of all these slices from little a to little b, my total volume, let me zoom out to write this. My total volume will be from a to b. Now I take out the pi, so I'm summing up all these guys, capital R squared minus little r squared dx. Right, and I'll leave it in terms of R for now because the R can be um, different depending on the question. Right, can be a function of whatever um, that you want. But conceptually, that's how you do. Now, they call these annulus, right, or washes, right, where you have like um, a circle with a circle missing on the middle, and these washes sort of get bigger and the hole gets bigger and bigger as you sort of go up for this diagram. All right. So we're going to use that volume to do some of the questions we're going to do that we're going to see today. And I'll give you, so I'm just seeing how much space I have. I've got space for one more shape. I'm just going to move this up a bit and move this one up a bit just so I can fit it all nicely on the same page, right? All right. I've got one more volume um, sort of shape that I want to do. And that volume, and once again, this was previously quite common in the extension to syllabus. Um, but there is the possibility that your teacher throws this in to your um, extension one, right? So if I had a shape, right? It looked like this, where the center of rotation is now no longer at the y-axis. It's somewhere else, right? If I wanted to rotate this about there, right? Yeah, and I gave you a function. Now, I'll draw an upside-down version of the one above, right? 
So you can sort of imagine that I'm rotating about here. Now, what's important is that once again, if I'm rotating about here, right? Let's go, let's say I'm rotating up between the values of A and B again, right? Right, so it sort of looks like that. And then this guy up here, and then I have all these little slices, right? Yeah, I'm rotating. Now, once again, let's pull out, extract out one slice, right? I'm going to extract out one slice and explore, right? So this guy here comes like a circle, right? If I zoom in for a bit. Now, ultimately, what I need is, I know that the change in Y is the height. Now, I need a radius, right? I need a radius for this. What's the radius? Now, the expression for the radius in this case is going to be this guy here, right? That's R. Now, how do I find R? I know that from here to here, right? That's the X value, right? That's the X value from here to this point here, right? To the graph. And I know from here to here, that's C. It's a constant. So then my expression for R is going to be C, right? Minus X. Which means for this sliver, the volume is going to be pi R squared which means total volume is going to be the integral from A to B, put a pi in front, and then C minus X squared DX. So why is it C minus X? Because I want radius to be this bit only, right? And that bit only is C minus X. Does that make sense? And, we, and then we sum that up from A to B. Guys, so once you start doing volume in a more advanced manner, you can either get the two down the bottom, right? You either get volumes where there's a hole in the middle or you get volumes where it's rotating about an axis that is no longer um, on the Y axis or the X axis, right? It's rotated, shifted right, uh, about another axis. So let's explore some of these questions. I've got a few sort of um, prepared. The first one is from Skeggs back in 2009 from the extension two paper, but um, the concept is um, explored here, right? So a cylindrical hole of radius A, so this is a fixed hole, is bored through the center of a sphere with radius of 2A. So you can see A and 2A, right? So I have a radius of A um, circle getting drilled down. Show that the volume of the remaining solid, right? So what you need to do, right, to do this question is to identify to yourself um, a slice, right? Take a slice. Right, which is why they call it the method of slicing, right? So if I take a slice here, right, just any slice, and I say to myself, I can sort of see, right, that there is a, do a bigger radius first, and then a smaller radius over here, and I'll give it a bit of height, right? Yeah, can you see? It's like an annulus, right? And if I had to do this, right, over here, just so I can draw a bigger for you, right? And then a smaller inside circle there. Now I know I want a big R for the big radius on the outside and I want a small R for the small radius here. And I know the change in this is dy, All right? Using the formula I did before, right? I know that volume is equal to pi integral from A to B of capital R squared minus little r squared dy. Now, I now just need to find an expression for capital R and little r in terms of y. So let's have a look, right? I can see that the big R, right, is basically the x value on the circle. Does that make sense, right? Because the big R goes all the way out to the edge of the circle, right? So this guy equals to x. Yeah, that guy equals to x. Little r is a constant, right? It never changes. It's always, right, to the value of a, right? It never changes. So little r is simply a constant of a, right? So once I sub all that in and the limit, now I'm going to be smart, right? You can go from the limit of whatever it is downstairs to whatever it is. So you can go from um, negative a, or negative 2a rather, to 2a. But because it's symmetrical, I'm just going to do this, right? I'm just going to go from the origin to 2a and just double my answer, right? 
So I'm going to go from the or, uh, zero to two a, and r squared is now x squared. Little r squared is now that dy, and then I'll just double my answer. So put a two in front there. Is that okay? Just smarter now. Yeah? Now, oh, actually, it's a board through. So actually, I don't go from go to two a, do I? It actually just goes from zero, and it stops there, doesn't it? Right. I believe if you went to two A, you get you'd probably get the same answer to be honest. But um, oh, you can't, you can't, you physically can't, because then the smaller radius is bigger than yeah. So I need to just change the top here to well, it tells me the A value there, so it'd be A root three. Yeah, does that make sense? Right, I just can't go to the very top because um, it's been cut off, right? So then now I have straightforward M. Integration, right? So I'll integrate that guy becomes x cubed on three. A is a constant, so that's just a squared x. A root three. Well, this algebra. Okay, let's have a look. Two pi. Sub that in, so it becomes a root three squared over three minus a root three squared. No, 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 no a squared times a root three and then minus zero don't need that right so when that happens oh this is cubed by the way so but square will cancel out bonds so that becomes two pi a cubed root three minus wait a second sorry oh no am i missing something so, oh, sorry, guys, I did something really silly, right? And that silly part is I'm integrating x squared with dy. I shouldn't do that, right? I need it in terms of y. So what I need to do is, where's my, this is an equation of a circle, right? This equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals to all a all squared, right? That's the radius squared. So to get it, to get it into y squared, this guy becomes... Let's see if it's right. So therefore x squared equals to 4a squared minus y squared. And I need to pop this guy into here. Yes, 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 that's better. Yeah. It becomes 2 pi, 0, a root 3, 4a squared minus y squared minus a squared dy. Yeah, so before I integrate, maybe group the, yeah, group this guy first to 0 m a root 3, 3a three squared minus y squared dy. Now we integrate, right? 3a squared is constant. This guy's y cubed on 3. And we go again, right? We sub stuff in again. What space do I have? Not bad. So 2 pi. Guys, sub that in 3a squared multiplied by a root 3 minus a root 3 cubed on 3. Don't worry about the 0. So that becomes 2 pi um, 3 root 3 a cubed minus, once again, the 3 cancels out. So you get root 3 a cubed 3. So it becomes 2 root 3, right? All right. Two root is a four root three pi a cubed units cubed. That's my answer. How's that? So the concept here, right, is basically we need to identify our little annulus, right? So this this thing here, our annulus, right? Which is basically like a circle in a circle, right? Circle with a circle punched out. Once you do that, right? Then you um, formulate for yourself, get your value for capital R and little r identified. So capital R is the X value to the circle. Little r is fixed as uh, A, sub that in and then integrate. And just be careful with the thing that I did there. Make sure you uh, sub in the value so that the function is in terms of Y, right? Let's do another one, All right? Let's do another one. Next one's from that HSC. 
Um, now, can I just say back when extension two had this topic in there, this topic, this question was done so many times, HC 9095, let's have a look, right? So this is basically combining the two aspects that I said, right? So firstly, the circle is rotated, the whole circle, right? It's rotated about an axis. Now, for those that have great imagination, it forms a donut, doesn't it? Because if you think about it, if it's a circle like this and it rotates, right? This whole circle rotates about this axis, right? It creates like a donut shape or a, a torus, right? Is what it says. Sweeps around to make a ring. So what I need to identify is a slice. So I know they put a slice there. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to extend this, right, for diagrammatic purposes and then draw myself a circle with another equivalent thing here. And then I'm going to go... Okay, big circle on the outside and okay, that's a really ugly drawing. I apologize. Yeah, but you can sort of see, right? That's my ring. Sorry, I'll draw a better one outside. That's my slice, right? Yeah, totally butchered this, but um, hopefully you'll forgive me. So it sort of looks like that with a little ring in the middle, right? Where once again, we have to identify what capital R is and what little r is, right? That's super key, right? So that's little r there. Now, all right, let's do it. So I can see in this question, show that the area, yeah, okay, cool. So I've got to just find the area of the top first. This area here is quite interesting because the blue radius is the x value on the circle. The green radius is also the x value on the circle, right? So basically, if I found, because there's a circle, right? If I found the two x values on this, right? So I'm just going to write this guy equals to x1, and this guy equals to currently x2. How do you find, right, the two x values? we need to solve, right? And I'll show you what I mean by that, right? So right now, right? If you sort of made uh, X a subject, right? From this equation, you will get the two X values that you need, right? You will get the two X values that, that you need. So first X value now, but also then it's, once I find the two X values, they're actually not my radius, right? Actually, let me rub this off. Because if you think about the diagram, right? I'm not... It would have been the X values if I had rotated about the origin, but I'm not, right? I'm rotating this about a different center, right? This is C, this is nine. So this distance here is nine. So what that means is that for my blue radius, it's going to be nine plus X, right? So nine plus X, yeah? While my green is going to be nine minus X, right? Does that make sense? Because if you look at it, 9 minus x, this is my radius here, right? That's my green one. That's 9 minus x, right? That's what I need. And for the blue one, it's the long one, which is 9 plus x. So how do you find x? I've got to just make x a subject here, right? So off to the side, right? I can sort of go x equals 2. Um, it'll be what? Square root of 16 minus Y squared. Don't need plus minus, right? Don't need plus minus. I just need the the, the the magnitude, right? Magnitude. So just get that. So therefore, when I do all this, right? For part one, they just want the area. The area is basically pi capital R squared minus pi little r squared. Right? And, uh, I can factorize it, but before I do that, well, actually, uh, let's go r squared minus r squared. Right? So it'll be nine plus X, right? So nine plus, so this guy, plus 16 minus X squared squared. Yeah. So Y squared rather, right? Minus nine minus root. 16 minus y squared, squared, right? So, 
and this will give us the area and then I multiply by dy and then I'll get the area uh, so the volume for the next part right yep cool so let me just zoom in here okay just be careful with your algebra here so let's see expand that that becomes 81 plus two of these square roots plus that squared so the square root goes away right and minus so that's in the first bracket and then minus exactly the same thing but with a minus over here yeah and then things cross out right so 81's gone this guy's gone and you're left with two of these minus minus two of these so it becomes like four pi square root 16 minus y squared that's the area yeah Actually, did I do that wrong? Let me see. Why does that look wrong? Um, hmm. I thought I got that, but let me let me have a look. Area is four. Four. Hmm. Not sure. Oh no, it has to be thirty-six, right? Because the question says thirty-six. Okay. What did I do wrong here? So I did some algebra. Sorry, bear with me. Give me a quick look. And area is that times that. So that's two. Oh, two times nine. So sorry, this is not two. This is 18, isn't it? Yeah, two times nine times this. Yep, yep, yep. Easy fix. Easy fix. And that becomes 36. Perfect. Yep. Done. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Cool, guys, so just to reiterate, right? So when I did this, I identified that my radius has to be, my big blue one has to be this guy here, which is nine plus X, right? And my green radius is this one here, which is nine minus X, right? Yep. So once I figured out what X was, which is this expression over here, sub it into the formula of pi r squared minus pi r squared, and then simplify the algebra. Now. Once you do that, right, the volume of this ring is then basically integrating it, right? Volume is basically integrating this guy from the lowest bound to the highest bound. So once again, because it's symmetrical, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to put a zero here, put a two here, and then whatever, I'm going to multiply by two, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Now, it'll be this guy integrated with the, so I'll bring out the 36 so times 36 pi root 16 minus y squared. No, is that right? Yeah, so give me a second. Is this right? dy? No, pi, this guy squared. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, just conscious of the fact that, now let me just make sure on my calculator that this is true. Because I'm integrating a square root, I'm just I'm going to apply a hack to it. That's all. Times two, seventy-two. That's four. Okay. No, let me make sure. Right? Let me make sure. So I'm integrating from. Oh, the limits are wrong. Right. Um. So zero to four. Zero. Four. Of this guy. So let me just make sure. Two times three six times four. Two eight eight. No, that's not right. So let's see. Integral of this area times this, right? So that's one volume slice. Negative four to four. I think it's right actually. Yeah, I think it's right. Okay, from zero to four. So that's pi r squared. Okay. Oh r squared. Yeah, so Two times this. So I'm just making sure that I'm gonna give you the right answer. I was gonna divide by two. Oh yeah, cool. Excellent. All right. Now, so let me write this again, right? Let me write this better. Just so I can explain. I don't want to confuse you, right? So I'll do the full working out first. So what you're supposed to do for the volume is that you go from negative four downstairs to upstairs of this guy that we found. Right, which is the area, and then if I multiply by dy, that's one slice, which gives us a volume, right? That's the integral that you need. Now, from this point, we're going to 
basically take out the 36. We're going to do two things, right? I'm going to change the limit from 0 to 4, noting that it's uh, symmetrical. So I'm going to times this by 2, right? And then bring the 36 pi out, right? Which leaves the integral of 16 minus y squared dy in here. So this is 72 pi from 0 to 4, root 16 minus y squared, right? Now, if you're here, you can try to use very advanced integration skills, right, to do this, right? Or you can appreciate this fact that if I integrate anything from 0 to 4 of 16 minus y squared, right, that's like saying, right, I have a circle and I want to integrate it from 0 to 4 to find the whole entire area under here. Now, I know integration would help me find the area, but I already know how to find the area. That's a semicircle, right? For the semicircle, the area is quite simply pi 4 squared divided by 2. So 8 pi. That's what it is, right? Just 8 pi. So without doing a lot of mathematics, I'm just going to sub this guy into the, the pink box, right? Just a little hack to integrate that. Otherwise, you'll need very advanced four unit techniques to um, integrate that with like fig sub, right? So then my answer should be 72 pi multiplied by 8 pi. And if you do, let me see, 72 times 8, final answer, 576 pi squared units cubed. What a nice question. Yeah, guys, how's that? So that is a more advanced version of this slicing technique, right? Where the slicing technique generally has a hole in the middle and you're just going to identify big radius and small radius depending on what you have. For this question in particular, it's, it's harder because it's a circle, right? Where the radius on the big is nine plus X and the radius on the small is nine minus X. A lot of the other questions that um, you see in this, one of the radii, like the first one here, the first question we did here, one of the radii is actually fixed, right? It's a fixed value of A. Yeah? Well, this one here, both of them are variable, but then that just means you just um, make it, make um, capital R and little r um, an expression in terms of x, right? And then you basically sub it in and um, square it. Once you square it and get, so once you get the expression for the area, right? Use that area as part and multiply that by dy and take it to the limits to find volume. And then in this one, there's just a little bit of a hack to integrate a semicircle right, which is pi r squared on two, right? And then you sub that in and you get the final answer. Guys, how was that? So the slicing technique for volumes, I thought I'd do this video just in case your teachers at school throw in something like this, right? Now you have a resource on how to do it. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the next video. Like the video, subscribe, and tell your friends. Thank you. See you later.